Is there anything scarier than true-to-life horror? Whether it's completely factual or inspired by the idea of a true event, movie studios like to use this as a marketing tool to boost ticket sales. In all honesty, the horrors of cinema are nowhere near as brutal or scary as real life. I think that's part of the reason why true crime is as popular as it is. People are obsessed with violence and petty drama, as long as it's not buried in their own backyard. Move on. Nothing to see here. The film I'm reviewing for you today sort of falls into this true events category. It's an award-winning queer-themed film called Bliss of Evil, and it's the latest film from Pieces of Work Productions. And you want to know the best part? It's from Australia, the birthplace of Masters of Horrors Lee Whannell and James Wan. Hell yes, of course. Yes. Now let's hop on the tour bus and talk about Bliss of Evil. So what's the go for a house in here? The place looks like a bit of a dump. My family owns the place. Time to get up! Go on! Right. Hello. Hi. In the movie, we follow a grunge band as they get together to practice inside of a recording studio. Things take a drastic turn as the group becomes locked inside the building. What ensues is a hellish night of mistrust and mayhem as they are confronted by a shadowy killer. I went into this movie almost completely blind. I knew very little about it leading up to the virtual screening at Panic Fest. Truth be told, I did get to see this movie even before Bury the Bride, which I've just reviewed previously on this channel. Bliss of Evil is a much heavier film in comparison, so it took me a little longer to process what I've watched. It's a dark movie, so go figure that experience would stick with me much longer. It's a gut-wrenching thriller that touches on themes like male privilege and toxic masculinity. Bliss of Evil was also picked up for distribution by Bayview Entertainment, whose credits include such releases as Skin of Marink and Winter Hunger. Needless to say, it's in good company. Is that what you guys want to be? Could have been. I don't want Prom Night to be just the best band in Brisbane. I want more than that. Within the first 15 minutes, I got the sense that this movie was heavily inspired by the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The true events story setup, the interactions between the characters, and the less is more approach to the violence felt very Texas Chainsaw. But unlike Texas Chainsaw, Bliss of Evil takes place in the 1990s. The film makes excellent use of its shoestring budget with a lovable cast of characters, singular location, and a heart-pounding musical score. Although the plot may sound like your average slasher movie setup, having a limited cast bundled into one location, Bliss of Evil weighs more into the trauma surrounding the group and does not play out like your average slasher film. Bliss of Evil takes place on one single night and tensions are high the moment the band begins to rehearse. We have to get out of here right now! No one's coming to help us. What struck me immediately was the location in which Bliss of Evil takes place. The majority of the film is inside of a recording studio. Most indie horror films, because of their budgets, tend to use very limited sets and locations. Oftentimes, these movies are built from having access to said locations. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's all about the story that's being told. I'm willing to bet that this movie was filmed in a legitimate recording studio. Either way, director Josh Morris has done an excellent job in using this limited space to capture fear. Bravo! We're with the band for most of this film, and this group becomes tormented by a man with a face drenched in blood. This crimson masked figure takes time making his presence known, leaving our main protagonist to question the actions of each other. This level of paranoia made for excellent edge-of-your-seat entertainment. Seeing Bliss of Evil a part of a lineup in a film festival called Panic Fest is very fitting because there were moments in this movie that gave me anxiety. It's a realistic depiction of trauma and how people live after enduring such horrific events. There are certain moments in this movie that are very hard to watch. I really don't want to get into spoilers, but there are certain traumatic moments in this movie that you don't even get to see. Again, like Texas Chainsaw, less is more. You may not see it, but you can definitely hear it. And I think that's much, much worse. Leaving something so shocking and so cruel up to the viewer's imagination is much more effective. And Bliss of Evil gives you plenty of time to soak it all in. 
combining these horrific elements with that dread-inducing musical score made my skin crawl. When I was a kid, I believed there was a presence in my house. As painful and as shocking as it is, these moments of true horror has a purpose. It's crucial to the story, and it really sets itself apart from similar films of this genre. Bliss of Evil gives you plenty of time with the characters before throwing them into harm's way, and the queer representation is treated with the utmost respect and normalcy that it deserves. Charney and Corey are the two lead actors you see on the poster, and both of them put on terrific performances that are drastically different from each other, with Charney playing the sympathetic babyface and Corey playing the stone cold heel. Corey's performance as the blood face killer is absolutely terrifying. His soulless Michael Myers-like expressions are the thing of nightmares. Charney has this way of performing with these facial expressions that really make you feel for the character, which made it very easy to root for her. It is miraculous. Bliss of Evil has a lot to say in regards to social issues like gender roles and equality, and it doesn't beat you over the head with that messaging. Though unsettling at times, Bliss of Evil is a remarkable film that touches on trauma in a way that feels all too real. The story is simple, the performances are great, and the very idea that this may have been inspired by true events made for a haunting and bleak experience. <laughs> Although this is a very dark movie, I did enjoy my time with it. As of this recording, Bliss of Evil is still in the film festival circuit but I can easily see it being played on a streaming service like Screenbox or Tubi. If you ask me, I think this would be a perfect fit for Shudder. That would be great. Bliss of Evil is a film I would recommend checking out once it becomes widely available. It's an emotionally moving experience that will stick with you long after you watch it. When you decide to watch it for yourself, prepare to be disturbed.